All right, guys, through the generosity of the winner of this lock last Saturday, we're going to get a chance to take a look at the internal mechanism. Uh, she did not want to pay the shipping to Europe. It's quite expensive, and I can understand that. But she did say that it was under the condition that we cut it open and take a look and see how it works. So I guess she's getting her money's worth one way or another. All right, this is the Capital One Defiant Padlock, the magnetic padlock. You guys, I'll put the link to the original review down at the bottom. And this is the magnetic key. This thing still works perfectly. Slide it on there like that, and you get an open. Now, I got to tell you, there was a lot of interest and a lot of comments about the lock and the key and how I could possibly beat it. And some of the advice was uh, useful. Some was a little questionable, like, hey, Bill, think backwards or get an Etch-A-Sketch and break it open and dump the powder on the lock and that'll tell you the combination. Or get yourself a magnetic viewer or you need to build an Arduino board with electromagnetic coils. Yeah, that, that, anything that starts off with, hey, Bill, you need to invent a blank, I always find it interesting. But uh, the magnetic viewer was a little bit handy. Some of you guys recommend that I get a magnetic viewing paper. And in fact, I have some. Uh, I tried it. It just didn't show me a lot. So we know, because some of you guys found the repinning kit for these magnetic keys uh, on, the, uh, on the internet, and you sent a picture, and I'll overlay it so you can take a look. They give us a little bit of information about the internal layout, but let's pretend that we haven't seen that, and instead, let's go with the magnetic paper. Um, all we do, we lay this guy on there, and that will tell us where the magnets are. And they give us a little bit more information. If you take a look at the magnets, you can see a little, like a little tit sticking out of some of these, but they're not in what looks like a normal array, kind of odd looking pattern, as well as the magnetic paper, unfortunately, doesn't tell us the magnetic orientation. It doesn't tell us which side is the north or south, or as Capital One calls it, the black or the red side of the magnet. It just tells us where they are. So. Not so useful other than getting a good count on the magnets. What is interesting, and there's a lot of speculation about this, is does the lock contain magnets too? Because if we take the magnetic paper and put it on there, that'll tell us the exact layout of that. And in fact, when you put that on there, yes, indeed, it does have magnets. But again, it doesn't tell us the orientation and it doesn't tell us which of those it almost looks like a skeleton, but doesn't tell us which of those are active and which are not active, or which way we need to rotate them, what the magnetic orientation is. It just doesn't tell us enough information in order to get inside of here. So let's do this logically. Rather than just jump into the cut now, let's take a look at the key first. I'm going to go ahead and bust this open. Let's take a look at the internal parts of this, how the, the wafers are put in there. Maybe that'll give away a couple of clues before we start chopping on the lock. All right, guys, it's a little easier than I thought. All I do is stick a screwdriver in the slot and the top slides right off. And now, of course, comes the hard part. I can see that there are these little super magnets beneath this steel plate. I don't have any clue what that code is. Probably the code for the to, to rekey this thing. Um, this little steel plate is stuck to those magnets, though, unfortunately, and it it's below the beveled edge here. So I can't simply, I can't simply pull it off because all the magnets and everything come out with it. I've got to figure out a way to kind of slide it. And what I thought I would do is take this little knife, slide it under here, and use them as kind of a ramp to maybe, I don't know, slide him off of there. Let's find out. All right, I'm going to slide him there, and that creates the ramp, hopefully. And then I can take this guy and just lever him off. Now he's over the edge. Let me pull that out of there. Maybe I can just slide him now. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. And none of the magnets came out with that little steel plate. I don't know if that was a protection mechanism or not, but it definitely was not so easy to get out. All right, so we do see six discs in here, but each of the discs looks like it has a couple of different magnets. Now, if we can believe the instruction from the rekeying kit, we have a red and a black. So I see the red. So this is probably represents one orientation of the magnet. So, and we also see these little tits that align inside of these grooves to keep everything perfectly aligned, doesn't spin around inside of there. So the red side and the black side will represent north and south. It looks like each of the discs has one of each of the two orientations. Let's pull one of these discs out and find out if maybe there are two magnets on the other side as well. 
that would make it easy to decode so far if we knew the orientation of the magnet. And the lock is not going to give that up. Tell you what, let me try just to take the steel plate. Let me put them on one of these. See if I can pull the magnets out. Or, yeah, there we go. Or I can pull the whole disc out. All right, so. Let me see if these are separate magnets. Or it looks like it might be the same magnet. It is. These are the same magnets. So it's not too different at a different angle or different orientation on the other side. All right, I'm not going to mess with this. Just, I'm probably going to be ruined when I get through machining the thing open anyway. So, all right, if you look at the different angles, you can see the pins are, the magnets are in different places on each of the different discs. And then you've got the different polarity of each of the magnets. So different locations, different polarities. There are six discs with 24 different possibilities, which means there are more than 7 million possible combinations of the magnets in here, at least according to Capital Industries. Now, when you remove all the duplicates, when you remove all the unsecure or overlaps, uh, that leaves 262,000 secure, separate individual combinations. That's my math, and that's also what uh, Capital Industries is saying. So that is what we're looking at. This, is, this explains why we weren't able to use the electromagnet, uh, electromagnet or use the strong uh, magnet to, to spoof this thing. This truly is a very, very complex lock. All right, now, when we look at this, we know how this is oriented now. I really don't think knowing that would help us get into this because, obviously, we wouldn't have a chance to look at the key. We would be able to look at this and see that, indeed, there are 12 different possibilities, six per side. Again, we don't know the orientation of the magnets, in other words, which angle they need to be rotated at with the disc. We also don't know the polarity. So spoofing this... Without knowing, the, without knowing those details, probably is not going to be possible. Of course, it's much easier to smack this thing with a hammer or a saw. But anyway, I'm talking about trying to hack it. All right, so here's what we're going to try to do. We know how the magnet works. We know what kind of what we're expecting. I want to know how the lock and unlock mechanism works, just like you do. So I'm going to put this in a milling machine. I'm going to cut it around the perimeter and try to remove the whole plate in its entirety without disturbing the innards so we can get a nice close look. Let me give that a shot and see what happens. All right, guys, that was quite a bit more machining than I thought it was going to be, uh, but it looks like the lock is made from aluminum. I think you can see there's a difference in the brass. I had to machine away, man, it's like a half, or not quite a half, maybe three-eighths of an inch around the perimeter, and then go down almost a quarter of an inch in order to get down to where I am. This little plate on the top, I think it's only held on with these four little posts, and a couple of them are already broken. So, I thought I'd like to at least get the camera going before I pop this little top off, oh, it's just barely hung on there, and have a bunch of stuff jacking the box out. All right. All right, that is not quite what I expected. I expected the whole lock to come out or to expose the mechanism. Based on the machining on the other side of this, it looked like they might have machined it from the other side, inserted the lock, and there must be, ah, uh, I think you can see it right there. There's a really fine, now that all the machining has kind of busted it loose a little bit, you can see a little disc right there, a little plate that's insert in there. If I had seen that earlier, I would have gone in from this side. All right, so the lock will come out, but it's got to come out the back. Anyway, let's see if this thing still works. Hope I could put those magnets back in correctly. All right, so it, it seems to center itself. And maybe not. I might have, might have messed something. There we go. It does work still. So we're still in the ball game here. Let me turn this guy over and see if I can't get that plate out of there so we can get the entire lock mechanism out. It's turning into quite the adventure. Don't force it with a little one. All 
All right, we're part of the way there. All right, before I force it, obviously there's got to be a way to control those locking balls, and that appears to be what's holding this inside of here. So I probably need to cut away that so we can get a good view of how that is secured up there. All right, guys, I think it's a little easier to see what's going on here. I thought these were ball bearings. They're actually cylinders with rounded edges. And this is not a ball bearing on this side. This is, or not rounded. It is simply a bearing surface that goes up against the shackle. And the other side, it looks like it is it is rounded on the other side. So how does it work? I mean, I wondered how, why it was so difficult to open these locks, and that's because they're really not spring-loaded. When you unlock this, and we'll, I'll pull it out and show you, this whole mechanism retracts, and this little domed area right here will slide down. As you pull up on the shackle and put pressure on these, they'll force against that rounded edge and then cam it down out of the way, allowing you to get an open. So this guy ought to just slide out of here. This is how they build them. So if this were the intact lock, they would slide the locking mechanism in. They take that back plate, slide it on there, knock it in flat, and then refinish it. So pretty cool. All right, how's this work? Stop bleeding, Bill. All right, just uh, just for fun, and uh, crossing fingers that this works, I think this was the right orientation, so let's slide them on there. And if that's correct, this should now collapse, and it does. And if the magnets are off, then it does not. So we need to see the inner mechanism. And the only way to do that is going to be to remove these four little brass screws. Again, I'll try to do it without having stuff jacking the box on us. Let's see what we got here. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, that is very cool. Uh, let me grab a probe here. These little guys, and I'll try to demonstrate it in a minute, um, these little guys spin around inside of here, provided I don't have too many metal shavings. And again, you can see that it probably matches up almost perfectly. We have the red, and then one pole here with red, and the other pole would be what they call the black. Um, these are very fine little points. This is a lot like a, the inside of a watch in some respects. All right, what I'm going to try to do now I'm going to try to take the magnet and put it on the other side, and then I'll hold this up and maybe we can see them turn. Yeah, isn't that cool? So when you take it away, arg. Take it away. Get in there. So that would be the gate. Get back in there. All right, so that would be the gate. So these little grooves all have to align right up in there, just like that, on all of these. And that's where these little screws fit to allow this thing to move up and down. So again, let's see if we can make it happen. I'll try not to break anything. That kind of worked. It's not aligned perfectly, I don't think, but that one's not, and that one has now fallen out. Now you can see how all those little gates are aligned and these screws would then be able to collapse downwards. If any one of them is wrong, in other words, if the angle is wrong or if you have the polarity wrong, one or more of these discs will not line up inside here. This is a very, very cool mechanism. It just gives me a, a lot of pleasure to see something made with this level of precision and amount of pride. It makes you proud to be Canadian, doesn't it? Anyway, guys, there you go. This is how the Capital Industries Defiant Padlock works. I think... Uh, I don't think an Etch-a-Sketch or a magnetic viewer or, you know, or thinking backwards is really going to help us too much. We really need to know the combination for this thing in order to get into it. Either that or a die grinder or a lathe or a uh, milling machine. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Appreciate your patience. Uh, thank you, unnamed subscriber, for donating this to the Lock Lab. I think uh, I really enjoyed opening this up, and I appreciate you... Uh, donating this to the lock lot. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.